Today we shall be looking at neonatal jaundice and with a specific focus in physiological and pathological jaundice. Neonatal jaundice is a yellow discoloration of the newborn skin and the sclera that occurs due to elevated bilirubin. Bilirubin by itself is a yellow pigment that is formed from red blood cell breakdown and clinically, clinical jaundice in neonates appears at bilirubin levels of more than 5 mg per deciliter or more than 85 micromoles per liter. In adults, jaundice appears at a slightly lower bilirubin levels of about 2 mg per deciliter. When looking at the pathophysiology of neonatal jaundice, we need to look at how the red blood cell breakdown occurs until the production of bilirubin. Red blood cells contain hemoglobin, which is responsible in carrying oxygen. Old red blood cells are usually removed by the liver and the spleen, or generally what we call the reticuloendothelial system. This hemoglobin is broken down into globin, which is later used, and the heme component that is broken down to bilirubin. Newborns are known to have higher hemoglobin levels of between 18 to 19 grams per deciliter so that it can meet the fetus oxygen demands. After birth, hemoglobin levels drop causing an increased red blood cell breakdown and bilirubin production. Being that these are neonates, the newborn liver is immature, therefore the bilirubin processing capacity of this liver is exceeded causing to excessive accumulation of bilirubin known as jaundice. We have two types of neonatal jaundice, physiological jaundice and pathological jaundice. Physiological jaundice is a type of neonatal jaundice that occurs after 24 hours of delivery. It peaks at 3 to 5 days and resolves by the 10th day. It is usually caused by an immature liver in presence of a high red blood cell turnover. Some risk factors for physiological jaundice include prematurity, bruising, polycythemia, and breastfeeding. On the other hand, pathological jaundice appears within 24 hours or it persists for more than two weeks. It is usually caused by hemolysis, infection, metabolic or endocrine disorders, and may cause generalized jaundice with a muddy color. Some of the causes of pathological jaundice include RH or ABO incompatibility, hypoxemia, sepsis, and bile duct obstruction. With excessive accumulation of bilirubin, we have a higher chances of developing bilirubin toxicity. And conjugated bilirubin crosses the blood-brain barrier causing what is known as canicras where there is a permanent brain damage due to bilirubin deposits in the brain nuclei. High cell bilirubin is a medical emergency, and this yellow staining of the brain fades away, leaving a dead neuron and a permanent brain injury. For you to diagnose neonatal jaundice, you need to measure the serum bilirubin levels, Check the mother and the baby's blood groups and RH status for cases of RH incompatibility. Perform a Coombs test for immune hemolysis. Check for hemoglobin levels in these neonates for anemias and signs of hemolysis. If jaundice occurs within 24 hours or persists for more than 10 days, you need to investigate if it's a pathological jaundice and find out what are the causes. Then you need to screen the baby for infection, as sepsis is one of the causes of pathological jaundice. The goals of management when handling neonates with neonatal jaundice are to prevent bilirubin encephalopathy known as canicras, to treat underlying causes of jaundice, and as well to maintain an adequate hydration and nutrition in these neonates. One of the management strategies is phototherapy. Phototherapy converts unconjugated bilirubin to water-soluble bilirubin that is ready for excretion. Phototherapy uses blue light of between 400 to 500 nanometers of wavelength 
and it is indicated in jaundice within 24 hours, deep jaundice within the palms and the soles, prematurity, and hemolytic jaundice. Some of the adverse effects associated with phototherapy include dehydration, loose tools, and irritability, skin rash, overheating and retinal injury, nutritional deficiencies of vitamins and calcium, and turning or development of a bronze baby syndrome. When phototherapy fails or bilirubin rises rapidly, we move ahead to the second management strategy, which is exchange transfusion. This exchange transfusion is used when phototherapy fails or bilirubin levels rises rapidly. It removes the bilirubin and the antibody coated red blasters, and you need to consider exchange transfusion at bilirubin levels between 400 to 430 micromoles per liter or when there is a rapid rise of the bilirubin levels in blood. This exchange transfusion involves a gradual removal and replacement of blood via the umbilical vessels. There are some of the adjunctive treatments that we can use in managing neonates with neonate jaundice, for example, phenobarbital, and phenobarbital is known to speed bilirubin metabolism. We have a tin, which is a mesoporphyrin, and this one inhibits the heme oxygenase that is responsible for bilirubin production. We can as well use intravenous immunoglobulins to reduce immune hemolysis and sometimes activated charcoal and bind to bilirubin in the intestine. However, this uh, mode is experimental. The some of the nursing and supportive care that we offer these neonates, for example, we ensure there is adequate feeding and hydration. We monitor for bilirubin levels regularly during treatment. Protect the baby's eyes during phototherapy. Monitor for any adverse effects of treatment. And as well, educate parents on jaundice warning signs. In summary, physiological jaundice occurs after 24 hours and pathological jaundice occurs within 24 hours or more than 10 days. Physiological jaundice results by the 10th day. However, in pathological jaundice, it exists or becomes persistent more than two weeks. Physiological jaundice is caused by an immature liver and a high red blood cell turnover, while a pathological jaundice has causes, for example, hemolysis, infections, or metabolic disorders. And in terms of severity, physiological jaundice is just a mild one as compared to pathological jaundice which is often severe and has a higher risk of developing connectors. And in treatment, physiological jaundice sometimes it doesn't require any treatment or can benefit from phototherapy. But in pathological jaundice, phototherapy is needed and exchange transfusion as well could be required and the treatment of the cause of this pathological jaundice.